Hello mathematicians. Um, this video is for the those in fourth grade um, at the current school system where I teach um, who are preparing for the math derby. This is a list of about 50 vocabulary words and just like in the other video I did for third grade I'm going to go over each word the definition and I want to show what it looks like. That way we can kind of build a little bit of understanding and make sure you kind of get it um, when you're trying to learn it. Um, these are not in the same order as the study guide the district has given out. Um, I tried to group them together so that similar topics were together. So, that being said, let's get started. Our first word is equally and likely event. Just, which means just as likely to happen as not to happen. If I were to roll a dice, I had the same chance of rolling any number. One, two, three, four, five, six. So that would be an equally likely event, just as likely to happen as not to happen. Next would be an impossible event, an event that cannot occur. I have a basket of oranges. What is the likelihood of me getting an apple out of that basket? It's impossible. That's an impossible event, an event that cannot occur. A likely event is an event that will probably happen. If these three apples are in a basket and I reach down and grab one to pick it out, I'm likely to get an apple, a red apple, because there's more red than green. So a likely event is an event that will probably happen. An unlikely event is an event that will probably not happen. So an unlikely event, so if I were to reach in that same basket and pull out a green apple, that's an unlikely event. It could happen but it's unlikely. Next, we have fact family. A fact family is a collection of related addition and subtraction or multiplication and division facts made from the same numbers. Here's an example here of one with multiplication and division. Three times five is 15, five times three is 15. Just rearrange the, the factors. 15 divided by three equals five, 15 divided by 5 equals 3. That is a fact family, all four of those together. It's a collection of related addition and subtraction or multiplication and division facts made from the same numbers. Next we have the word factors. Factors are numbers that are multiplied in a multiplication problem. For example, 6 times 4 equals 24. 6 and 4 are the factors. Those are the numbers that are multiplied in a multiplication problem. Next, we have the product. The product is the result of multiplying numbers. In other words, it's the answer. Six times four equals 24. Six and four are the factors, but the product is 24. It's the result of multiplying numbers. Next, we have the word difference. Difference is the answer when subtracting two numbers. 6 minus 4 equals 2. The answer is the difference. It's 2. So a difference is the answer when subtracting two numbers. Sum is the result of adding two or more numbers. That's the answer to an addition problem. 6 plus 4 is 10. 10 is the answer. It's the sum. The sum is the result of adding two or more numbers. Next we have the word divisor. A divisor is the number by which another number is divided. 6 divided by 3 equals 2. The divisor is 3. That's what 6 is divided by. So the divisor is the number by which another number is divided. Now a quotient is the answer to a division problem. 6 divided by 3 equals 2. 2 is the answer, which means it's the quotient. The quotient is the answer to a division problem. Next, we have a remainder. A remainder is the amount left over after dividing. Sometimes when you divide, you have some left over. And if I divide seven by three, that's gonna go in, three goes into seven two times, which makes six. And seven minus six is one. That's the remainder, that's what's left. So the remainder is the amount left over after dividing. Now a variable. 
is a letter or other symbol that represents a number. You may have seen a problem. 6 plus x equals 4. What does x stand for? Well, x is a variable. It's a letter or other symbol that represents a number. Next, let's move to fractions. Numerator is the number written above the line in a fraction. So if you have a fraction, the number on top is a numerator. It's the number written above the line in a fraction. The denominator is the number written below the line in a fraction. So that same fraction, the numerator is on top, the denominator is down below, it's the number written below the line on a fraction. We also have a special kind of fraction called a mixed number. A mixed number is a number that is written using both a whole number and a fraction. We see that right here, 2 and 1 fourth. We have a whole number 2 and a fraction 1 fourth. That's a mixed number. It's a number that is written using both a whole number and a fraction. Next we have the word equivalent. Equivalent means that numbers that name the same amount. Now that can look different ways. In fractions, one half equals three six. They both equal one half. It could be as simple as 10 equals 10 or two plus three equals four plus one. They both equal five. So equivalent is numbers that name the same amount. Next, let's look at some measurement. Capacity. Capacity is the measure of how much a container can hold. So you, can, you see containers come in different sizes. The amount it holds is its capacity. It's the measure of how much a container can hold. We can also measure using a yard. A yard is a customary unit of length equal to 3 feet or 36 inches. You see a yardstick here. It, it's equal to 1, 2, 3 feet. So a yard is a customary unit of length equal to 3 feet or 36 inches. Next we have a centimeter. Now a centimeter is in the metric system, not the customary system. It's in the metric system and it's a unit of length equivalent to 1 one hundredth of a meter. Centi means hundred. So in the metric system, a unit of length equivalent to one one hundredth of a meter is a centimeter. And you can see it here. If you're ever using a ruler, sometimes you see the bigger spaces on top and the smaller spaces on bottom. Those are centimeters. Next we have a kilometer. A kilometer is also a metric unit of length equal to a thousand meters. Kilo means thousand. Now we might measure things by miles. However, in the metric system, they do it by kilometers. Next, we have pound. A pound is a customary unit of weight equal to 16 ounces. 16 ounces equals one pound. If you weigh yourself on a scale, you use pounds. It's a customary unit of weight equal to 16 ounces. Next, we have a gallon. A gallon a gallon is a unit of capacity equal to four quarts. You might get a gallon of milk from the grocery store. And that gallon is four quarts. It's a unit of capacity equal to four quarts. Next we have year. This is also a form of measurement. It's a measurement of time equal to 365 days or 52 weeks or 12 months. And that would be a year. Next we have AM. AM is a name given to time between midnight and noon. Think about this as the morning and breakfast. At 8, 10 AM, you'd be having your coffee trying to wake up. In the afternoon, of course, is PM. But midnight to noon, which is in the morning, is AM. Next, let's look at graphs and data. Data is information gathered by observing, counting, or measuring. So if you see a chart, the information, or a graph, the information gathered on there is data. And that's information gathered by observing, counting, or measuring. Some people, instead of data, might say data. It means the same thing. Next, we have a line graph. A line graph is a graph that connects points to show how data changes over time. So you can see as we go across this graph, the line shows that. So a line graph is a, line, is a graph 
that connects points to show how data changes over time. We have another one called a line plot. A line plot is a display of data along a number line. So in this line plot, it's measuring how hours spent reading. So we ask students, how many hours did you spend reading over the break? We see that four students spent three hours. One student spent six. And we can count the X's to find out. That's a line plot. It's a display of data along a number line. Next, we have a scale. A scale is, is numbers that show the units used on a graph. So we have a bar graph here measuring different favorite sports. And the scale, we see it here. We can count 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So our scale is counting by ones. The scale is numbers that show the units used on a graph. Next, let's get into geometry. We have a polygon. A polygon is a closed plane figure, which is a flat 2D figure, formed by three or more line segments that meet only at their endpoints. And I see a bunch of examples of closed plane figures here. These are all polygons. Poly means many, that's many sides. So a polygon is a closed plane figure formed by three or more line segments that meet only at their endpoints. Now, one special kind of polygon is a quadrilateral. Quad means four. So a quadrilateral is a polygon with four sides. And we see some examples here. A square, a rectangle, a rhombus, a trapezoid. Those are all quadrilaterals. They're polygons with four sides. Next, we have congruent figures. These are figures that have the same size and same shape. Here we have two hexagons. They're the same size and the same shape. They look a little different because this one's been turned, but they're still the same size and the same shape. That means they are congruent. Next, we have hexagon. Hexagon is a six-sided polygon. So we can count the sides, and we have six sides. Hex, hexa obviously means six. So a hexagon is a six-sided polygon. A pentagon is a plane figure with five sides. Penta means five. So we know we have five sides on this shape. And that would be a pentagon. Next we have net. Now a net is a pattern used to make a solid. For example, we have a solid rectangular cube here. If I were to take this net, this pattern, and fold it up, it would make a rectangle. We have the two ends, the sides, the top, and the bottom. So that would be a net. It's a pattern used to make a solid. Next, we have a sphere. A sphere is a solid figure in the shape of a ball. So think about a basketball or a tennis ball. Um, those are um, spheres. They're solid figures in the shape of a ball. Next, we have a line of symmetry. A line of symmetry is a line that divides a figure into two halves that match exactly. So I have a line of symmetry here breaking this bigger rectangle into two rectangles that are the exact same. The line of symmetry breaks it exactly in half. So it divides a figure into two halves that match exactly. Next we have the word vertex. A vertex is the point at which rays or line segments of an angle or the sides of a polygon or the edges of a polyhedron meet. So I have an angle here and I have a triangle here and those little corners are vertexes. It's the point at which rays or line segments of an angle, the sides of a polygon, or the edges of a polyhedron meet. Next we have the word angle. Speaking of angles, an angle is a figure formed by two rays with the same endpoint. So we know um, angles can be big, like an obtuse angle or an acute angle, but either way an angle is a figure formed by two rays with the same endpoint. Now an obtuse angle is an angle measuring more than 90 degrees and less than 180 degrees. Now 90 degrees would be a right angle and this is bigger than a right angle because that would be like an L. So this is an obtuse angle. It's an angle measuring more than 90 degrees and less than 180 degrees. Next we have the word line. A line is a straight path that goes on indefinitely, that means it never ends, in opposite directions. 
So I put the arrows there because it never stops. It's a line. It's a straight path that goes indefinitely in opposite directions. Next, we have perpendicular lines. Perpendicular lines are two lines that intersect, with, which means they connect, to form right angles. So I have right angles being formed everywhere the lines meet. That makes them perpendicular lines, two lines that intersect to form right angles. Well, sometimes they don't make right angles, they just connect. And these are called intersecting lines. And these are lines or line segments that meet or cross each other. So these are intersecting lines. They're not perpendicular because they don't make right angles, but they're still intersecting lines because they're lines or line segments that meet or cross each other. Next we have parallel. Parallel lines are parallel are lines that remain equal distance apart no matter how far they are extended. So here I have two lines. They're going in opposite directions and they're going to continue that and they're never going to touch no matter how far they are extended. Now, parallel lines in a plane are lines that never intersect. So I have a shape here. Those lines will never touch. So those are parallel lines. So these two are obviously are very connected. Next we have the word perimeter. Perimeter is the distance around a closed plane figure or region. So if I were to start measuring and go all the way around this rectangle, I would find the perimeter. That's the distance around a closed plane figure or region. Now if I were measuring the inside, that's the area. The area is the number of square units needed to cover a region. So in this one, I have three rows of four. That area of this would be 12 square units. The area is the number of square units needed to cover a region. Next we have the word range. The range is the difference between the greatest and least values in a set of data. So here I have a collection of numbers. The smallest number is one, the largest number is seven. The distance between them is the range. The range in this one is six. So the range is the difference between the greatest and least values in a set of data. Next we have that same group of numbers and I have the word mode. The mode is the value or values that occur most often in a set of data. So I have these same numbers. Three happens three times. So that would be, which is more than any other number. So that would make it the mode. The mode is the value or values that occur most often in a set of data. And last is the word median. And this is the middle value in a set of data when the data, are, data is list, are listed in order from least to greatest. So I put those numbers in order from least to greatest. The one in the very middle is the median. It's the middle value in a set of data when the data are listed in order from least to greatest. That's a long video. Thanks for sticking with me to the end. Hopefully this will help you study and this will help us be fully prepared for the math therapy when it comes up. Good luck.